Hello everyone. How are you doing today? Are you ready for a story? Catch a ride on raindrops. That is going to be today's story. The author of the story is Anjali Vaidya and the illustrator is Sayan Mukherjee. And the publisher of this book is Pratham Books. Splash in the puddles, jump in the rain. Ah, it's a rainy time. Such a fun time, right? Look at all the kids. They're all looking so happy, so jubilant. Because it's raining. What are they doing? They're splashing in the puddles. They're jumping and playing in the puddles. Puddles are these small pools of water that gets collected when it rains. On the ground, you can find small pools of water, right? Little bit of water everywhere. Those are called puddles. And they're splashing and jumping in the, in the puddles. Catch a ride on raindrops falling from the sky. The rain is falling from the sky, from the clouds, right? Now, we are going to ride on it and see the journey that a raindrop takes. Rain hits the ground and seeps far below. From the cloud, it rains, right? And what does it do then? Then it hits the ground or the earth and it starts seeping. Seeping meaning going inside through all the holes and pores on, on the soil. It goes far below. It goes very deep down. Let's see how deep it goes. Down where the worms live, past where the termites dig. So there are a lot of earthworms and other worms in soil, right? The water, the rainwater seeps or goes beyond that area where the worms are living. Not only that, it goes beyond where termites are. Do you know what termites are? Termites are these small insects, pale white looking insects. They are called white ants. They are white in color. They are small like ants. And like ants, they live in large colonies or large numbers in one place. So what do they do? They eat rotten wood and other things. So they live underneath, under the ground or in such like anthill, they make small mounds in soil. You can see sometimes on uh, tree barks as well, small mounds of soil. They, the, uh, the termites or the white ants uh, will live in these sand or soil mounds. Okay. And underneath also they live, under the ground also they live and the water or the rainwater is seeping beyond that. Snakes slide and ants creep down the rain seeps. So you can see the snake that is also living underground. Ants, ant hills would have been, they would have built it underground. Look at rats, they also live underground, right? In all those places, there is space for the rainwater. It, uh, it goes into those, those cracks and small underground passages that these animals and insects have made. All those things get filled up with rain. Trickle between rocks, squeeze into cracks. Look at these rocks. There is, there is some gap, right? Trickling means going in small amount, like a small stream. Little by little it is going. Even in those small gaps, they will start flowing. The water is, rain water is flowing through these small gaps. Trickle and squeeze. Even if there is a small gap where only a drop can flow, the rain water will still go through those cracks. Moisture moves out of sight, deep underground. Where has it reached? Look, all the layers it has crossed. Now it has reached the underground water table. Look, it is now flowing underground. So this is where, from this place, the underground water table is where you get water for your wells and bore wells. See, there is a bore well that has been dug. So they get water from this underground water table. So the rain water has now reached that place. Look, all the layers of soil and earth and rocks that it has covered and it has finally reached the underground water table. What happens then? 
spring from the earth, rush with the streams. So after that, it comes up again as a spring. At some places, what will happen? The pressure is so high, it wants to come out. And it comes out as a spring. The water just rushes out of, uh, like a spring. And it will join streams which are nearby. Streams are these small rivers. You can call them rivulets. Race with the fishes far across the land. There will be a lot of fish in the rivers and streams, right? So the water will flow, flow uh, uh, with the fish and it will go far across the land. You can see that all the uh, rivers and uh, streams are very long. They go many kilometers. Warmed by the sun, up water floats. What happens now? All the surface water bodies like the river, streams, pond, lakes, all those things, it will get heated up by the sun's rays. It is warm, right? Sun is, gives heat. So it gets heated up. So the surface of the water, which is liquid in form, now starts evaporating and becomes what is called water vapor. And that is in gaseous or in gas state. So they will go up. Look, the gas is going up into the sky. Into the sky is far above. Vapor turns to cloud. So these water vapor that has been formed from the water goes up into the sky and they form these small clouds. Thundering in the sky, they bulge and rumble and grow. So these small clouds will come together. When two clouds hit, when they're filled with water and when they hit each other, what happens? You hear a thunder. You would have heard thunder when it is about to rain, right? Such a loud, deep noise. And these clouds become bigger and bigger. They join with each other and they bulge. Bulge meaning swell or becoming big, fat. So they become bigger and bigger. They grow very big till water bursts in pouring rain down to the earth again. So finally, what happens? It cannot take it anymore. It has become too big and it just falls down and has the rain again back to the earth. How to ride the water cycle? Water travels far and takes many forms over the course of the water cycle. It comes to the earth as rain from the sky. It fills rivers and soaks into the ground to join the water table. The water table, like a river underground, emerges into open air in the form of springs and lakes. Water travels up into the sky as vapor when it is warmed by the sun and comes together as wispy clouds. When clouds grow dark, and heavy with water, they open with pouring rain, bringing water back to earth once more. So the cycle that we saw that water takes is called as water cycle. So water travels far, up and down it travels, right? From the sky down to the uh, earth, underground it goes, then it comes to the top again, and again it goes to the sky. So this cycle is called water cycle. So when it comes from the sky, it comes as rain. As from rain, it starts filling up the earth surface as either waters, uh, as uh, rivers, lakes, ponds, etc. And it also goes underground and fills up the underground water table. Right? We saw all these things. Then finally what happens? The surface water, when it starts getting heated up by the sun, that becomes water vapor and goes up again to the sky, forms big clouds and then starts pouring down again as rain back to. So this cycle, which the water takes, is called as water cycle. Let us look at some of the difficult words that we saw in today's story. Puddle, a small pool of water, especially of rain water on the ground. Seep. Seep means 
flow slowly through pores or holes. Termites, a small insect which lives in large colonies. They feed on wood and lives within a mound of cemented soil. The picture that you see on your screen is that of a termite and a termite's house. Trickle. Trickle means flow in a small stream, very small stream. Squeeze. Squeeze means manage to get through narrow space. You are squeezing yourself. If there is a very small space, you are trying to somehow go into that. Bulge. Bulge means swell or become big. Rumble. Rumble means make a continuous deep echoing sound. You would have heard the ton thunder, right? You can see, you can hear that it is so deep, big, deep sound. And it has that echo kind of effect. So that is called rumbling. Try these questions. In today's story, we saw water in liquid and gas form. Can you think of a solid form of water? What is it called? In the water cycle, what is the solid form of water called? Water from rivers, ponds and lakes become water vapor in the water cycle. We saw that, right? There are also other really large water bodies from which water gets evaporated to vapor and form clouds. What are these large water bodies called? Did you like today's story? I really enjoyed it. Until next time, it's bye from Saumya.